So if anybody has attended any of my boot camps um, before, I always find these questions difficult to answer because I do tend to take more of a stricter approach to this kind of pricing objection. Um, so any of you that are regulars, you probably know how I'm gonna answer this. Um, so uh, yes, you could have your customer sign a document, you know, waiving your responsibility, waiving your liability, you know, should that customer get infected because they decided to stay on Bitdefender. And oftentimes this, um, this document is referred to as a hold harmless letter or uh, an indemnity uh, agreement. Um, I don't have a sample document that I can send out because this really is something that you need to have your lawyer draw up for you because what gets covered in that agreement is really gonna be determined by your jurisdiction and where you live. But you know, if you do a quick Google search, um, there are so many different examples out there of hold harmless letters of indemnity agreements that you could really use to get you started and then you would just have your lawyer review that if, if you're looking to kind of get that that process started but i don't have any because we're a software company um, that that i can send out to you um, but basically you wanted to state that you're not going to be held financially liable should that organization suffer a cyber attack and I would also um, add some additional clauses to state that, you know, if there is a ransomware or any type of cyber event um, and they call on your MSP for help, that, you know, make that known that they now fall under your emergency rates and that your emergency rates are not like your normal time material rates. Like we've had partners say that their emergency rates for a cyber event is two to three times their normal rate. And you also wanna make them uh, make it known that there's no guarantee that you can offer that you're actually gonna be able to resolve their issue. You know, your remediation will be done on a best efforts basis and you will be paid for your time regardless of whether you're able to fully restore their systems or not. <clears throat> so it's not like one of those things where you know they get ransomed you can't help them um and they're like well you didn't get my data back i'm not paying you no regardless you know you start working on that it's three times my normal rate um and i will do my best but you know there's no guarantees um i would also make them aware that they're now considered a non-standard customer um, because they are outside of your recommended security program and non-standard customers you're given a lower priority status via V our standard program customers, you know, those that are subscribing to your uh, recommended security program, you know, the ones that are on EDR. So you want to really make it known within this hold harmless letter, within this indemnity agreement, within your conversation, that your standard program customers are the ones that get your first priority whenever any issues arise. Because when an issue hits, and you know it will. Um, you never want to have this non-standard client who's not listening to you. They're not adhering to your recommendations. Um, you know, they're they're kind of passing the buck. You never want those type of non-standard clients to take precedent and take you away from your standard customers and and what they may need of you. Um, my preferred approach is really for you to enforce EDR as your standard across all of your customers and remove Bitdefender, you know, as your AV solution, because with traditional AV, there's just too much risk um, keeping that in place because it can't protect like EDR can. And if your customer is claiming that they can't afford it, then this is where I would just say, you know, explain to them that, you know, well, this is what I'm standardizing all of my customers on, you know, let them know because of the different risks, because their risk, you know, the, the threat landscape is changing. There's risk to your MSP if you don't have everybody standardized, but, you know, you would be willing to transfer them over to another MSP um, because as it stands, being on Bitdefender, they're just posed posing too much risk to your MSP. And you don't really want to be in that position of having to support two different solutions across two different levels of, of customers. Because 
even if you do get them to sign that hold harmless letter stating that, you know, they're waiving their responsibility, um, they're not going to hold you liable should they suffer an attack. I th I've been told so many times, and I think in, in actuality, they're still going to blame you. Um, and it's going to become a very uncomfortable situation, especially if you can't fix things up for them after the attack. So that would really be my recommendation. Um, but I can appreciate that it's never easy firing a client. Um, but I really think in this case, with the heightened security threats that are out there today, every one of your customers you know, at a minimum should be on EDR. Like if anybody has attended my security boot camp, and I'm actually running it again twice next month, EDR is just one piece of a whole layered security puzzle. So, you know, I'm not going to use my answer today to this question to kind of go into the whole layered security, but that would be my ultimate recommendation. But if we're just talking AV, Bitdefender versus EDR, then every one of your customers should be on EDR. Um, and then any client that doesn't want to be I I would let them go um, because it is much more than just a monetary thing for you. You know, getting the I don't know how much you're getting off of them each month. It's 11, um, 11 workstations, but it's more than just that monthly payment that they're paying you. you no, know, this could cost you your reputation. Um, this could cost you your livelihood and the livelihood of your employees because businesses are always going to look for someone to blame. You know, they're not going to want to look inward and say, well, this is my fault um, because my budget, you know, that I perceived, um, you know, wouldn't allow me to, and I, and I don't, I don't need to pay for EDR when I have AV. And oftentimes, you know, when you do take that hard lined approach and if you tell a client, you know, this is just the way it is, and if they don't feel like complying and then you go and say, you know, very politely, very respectfully that, OK, not a problem, um, then just, you know, once you find a new MSP that you would like to work with, let me know and then I will help transfer you over to them. You know, just by you telling them this, oftentimes you'll be amazed at how many times your customers will, you know, kind of reconsider. And, and change their mind. Um, I've had many, many customers that, you know, once they kind of got over that standardization hump, you know, they would come back and say, I was really, really worried, you know, going back to my customers and kind of, you know, forcing them into this new program level because it wasn't going to cost much. I was worried I was going to lose them. And at the end of the day, they ended up losing like, you know, not even 5% of their customers. You know, most of them ended up taking on the new program, adhering to the standardization model because they didn't want to lose that partnership, that relationship with their MSP. Um, it's, it's just natural that when you go and give a customer, you know, something, if you're making a change, it's going to cost them new. That's usually the pricing card is what they're going to play. They're going to say, I can't afford this. I don't have money. I didn't budget for this. For this. Um, it, it's almost automatic, I think, a lot of the times. So don't be afraid to push back on these types of customers because it, it is for the betterment of your MSP, you know, doing that standardization play. Um, so this is one of those things that, you know, I I do take kind of a hard line on this for, for so many different reasons. Um, again, I do talk about it quite extensively in my boot camp on building and selling um, security programs.